we can join together in worship and in praise, hear an anointed word from God, and then we can go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank God for you. Thank God that you took the time out and you decided to call upon the Lord and together we can seek the face of God at the Back to Basics Online Church. I want to give a shout out to my friend Ryan Trogler up there in Pennsylvania, to my friend Tyrone Kirkpatrick in the in New York, and hey, I see my son Wes, uh, Wes Carter online with us today. Always good to see all of you all, plus so many more. Linda Barrett, praise God, thank God for you, and um, we just praise God. We're hoping that our friend from Dubai, David Carter, will come on and be with us. And, and whoever comes on, we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. This is a different kind of church. We just bless God. We just praise God. We don't try to duplicate any kind of church. We just want to come before the presence of God and tell him that we love him, worship him, give him our offering of praise and worship, and, and, and receive his word and then go forth into the world and let our light our light shine before men i thank god i thank god i praise god it's so good to wake up in the morning and see a brand new day so i thank god for you whatever your situation is i thank god we just committed all to the lord thank god that there is an online church where we can come together and worship god and i want to give a shout out to all of my former neighbors up in Maple Village, Chester, Pennsylvania. Uh, many of you will be watching this by tape and the recording, but I want to give a shout out to you that you've taken the time to be online, to worship. Praise God. You're my former neighbors, and I continue to pray for you and love you, and thank God that we shared a portion of our lives together. And so we bless God. Hallelujah. These are exciting times. Let us pray for our president as he meets with the president of North Korea and the president of South Korea and, and the president of Japan and other leaders. Let's pray to God to get the glory out of this meeting. We have the responsibility to pray for our president that God will lead him. Pray for the nation and pray for the nations. We know people all over this world. We have people online with us right now from Kenya and Uganda and from nations in Africa, nations in South America, nations in Europe. And we love you all, praise God, and we pray to God to bless you. My prayer is God that God will stretch forth his mighty hand upon the whole earth and bless the whole body of Christ and add daily such as should be saved. And if you're listening uh, by video or if you're watching, if you're online live with us today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want to be saved, I want to encourage you today. Get saved today. Salvation is a free gift from God. For by grace are you saved through faith. And it is not of yourself. It's a gift of God. God wants you to be saved. That's why he allowed, he permitted his son Jesus to die on the cross and take the punishment that you and I deserve. Jesus already paid for your salvation and you can get saved by faith. And then when you get saved, go and tell others about the love of Jesus, how he died to take away your sins. Nobody within the sound of my voice ought to be tormented by past experiences. Nobody within the sound of my voice ought to be tormented by people in your past. Uh, none of your crimes or your sins ought to be able to rise up against you because once you're saved, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Your sins are washed away. And when Satan tries to bring those sins up against you, the scripture says, the Holy Spirit like a flood will raise up a standard against them. So, it is so good to be in the ark of safety. It is so good to know that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And all those thoughts Satan puts in your mind, all those people who accuse you, people who condemn you, they can bring up stuff from the past. But when you are saved, all that stuff has been removed 
by the Lord Jesus Christ. The court may have a record on you. The police station might have a record on you. Your friends and your relatives might remember, but the Lord has no remembrance. All these things have been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. I think I just needed to say that to somebody today to remind you about the purity and the, the vastness of the gift of salvation, that when God saves you, he saves you, he sanctifies you, he sets you free, he cleanses you, he purifies you, and no matter what people think about you, you are a new cre creation in Christ Jesus. In fact, the Bible says that if, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Somebody ought to be rejoicing right now in that. I'm rejoicing in deep down in my sanctified soul. I'll tell you, I thank God. I look back over my life and I thank God for where he's brought me from. I give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. And so I join with the songwriter who said, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god we serve so i praise god i pray to god bless ryan god bless ryan with a new job hallelujah praise god ryan lost his job a couple weeks ago and he started work again praise god hallelujah let's hear from ryan uh let's ask ryan to come on and unmute his phone and tell us how his new job is coming along Oh, good morning, Pastor Carter. Bless you, Ryan. Oh, bless you too, bless you too. Well, my new job has come along splendidly. I love it, uh, and I know God put me there because I've been, this is a blessed job I've ever had, and it, it's, it pays really good. You know, I know the money don't mean, you know, as far as materialistic things, but God put me there for a reason, and yeah, it's it's an awesome job. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are happy for you, Ryan, and we thank God. Father, we want to thank you for blessing Ryan with our new job. We thank you that you said, no good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. So bless Ryan and his family, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if you're out of work, if you're going through something, you talk to God and you ask God. Let God know what you need. Put your trust in him and learn how to wait on him. Don't let any situation or any circumstance remove you from the presence of God. Don't ever doubt God. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And we just heard from our friend Ryan Trogler, praise God, up in Pennsylvania. And we thank God. Oh, God, you're so wonderful. God is stretching his hand throughout the whole earth right now, touching people, healing people, delivering people. I am so excited about what God is doing in our lives. And we give the praise and the glory and honor to God, uh, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and God, the Holy Spirit. Well, we're only on on the air for about 45 minutes we try to keep our our services within a, a reasonable amount of time uh, so that you can come in and hear and get this word and then go forth rejoicing and so today we're going to continue in our series our theme is every believer ought to be filled with the holy ghost every believer ought to be filled with the holy ghost and in the last several weeks I've been uh, ministering on the subject of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thus far, we have talked about the gift of knowledge. We have talked about the gift of wisdom. Uh, last week, we talked about the gift of prophecy. And today, I want to start a three-week series. I'm going to stretch this particular gift into three weeks we want to nail this thing down the gift of faith the gift of faith i believe that after you uh study with me in these three weeks you'll know more about the gift of faith you'll see how god is operating in you has operated in you and wants to operate in you and that uh we're going to just dispel that myth that he has more faith than me and she's got more faith than me or he's blessed because he got more faith than me no we're gonna blow that off the map we're gonna blow that theory off the radar god says he has given to every man a measure of faith 
God has given that same measure to every person. So we're going to get excited about the gift of faith. And for the next three weeks, we're going to look at this subject and we're going to get some uh, good word from the Lord and an anointing. And I just praise God that every one of you has the gift of faith. And for those of you who are going to get saved uh, listening to this uh, message today, God will give you the gift of faith also. God wants you to be equipped. Hallelujah. Satan's out trying to destroy, but God is equipping his people. And I'm so glad that I can put on my equipment. I can put on the full armor of God. And so can you. So we just praise God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning. And we thank you and bless you and honor you. Thank you for the online church. Thank you, Lord, that you're reaching people uh, in all parts of the world. We're, you're reaching people who cannot go to church. You're reaching people who've dropped out of the church. You're reaching people, God, who had given up, but you're renewing their strength and their faith in you. We thank you, Lord, that you are no respecter of persons. We thank you that you're stretching forth your mighty hand and you're healing. We thank you for miracles, God. We thank you for using your people to, to perform miracles. We worship you, lift you up, God. You are the mighty God. Now, God, I pray for every listener, Lord, whoever he or she is. I pray that you'll bless them, Lord, and bless them exceedingly abundantly above all that they can ask or think. Let your word not return unto you void, but prosper your word where it goes, God. And I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Once again, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining us today. I get excited when I see your name in the in the uh, attendance uh, window. I get excited knowing that you're calling in and you're listening to this word. And I get excited because I know the Holy Ghost is excited about doing something wonderful in your life. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 or download 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to read this scripture and then minister on the subject, the gift of faith part one the gift of faith part one first corinthians 13 we know this as the love chapter though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love i am become a sink a a sounding brass i am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity or love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long, and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It does not seek her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 8, love never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, or I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. That's from the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
as Paul writes to the, the church at Corinth, um, that the church was, was getting puffed up in their abilities. And, and, and this love chapter humbles us all. Uh, even though I speak in tongues, I'm not to flaunt my gift. I'm not to uh, 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 glorify the gift. I'm to glorify God. And I'm, I'm to speak in tongues decently and in order, ladies and gentlemen, according to what I am taught in the word of God in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. I am not to use any gift of the Holy Spirit to try to uh, blow myself up or or a, 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 uh impress anybody or try to uh, be above anyone else i'm to use the gifts that god has given me given me and to be humble and according to first corinthians chapter 13 i'm to, i'm to walk in love you can have the most uh, uh, uh popular uh preacher or uh, prophet on tv or in the church in the world they can be so popular uh but if they're not walking in love ladies and gentlemen they're on dangerous ground and so with these gifts of the holy spirit that we're talking about and we're ministering in in this series on the gifts of the holy spirit we want to walk in love we want to honor god and the holy spirit and the lord jesus and to walk in love and we want to honor one another no one is better than any other nobody in the church is better than you nobody in the church is better than me some of us tend to become intimidated when we see people walking in the great gifts of the holy spirit but do not be intimidated ladies and gentlemen test the spirits by the spirit are they walking in love are they being an example for the body of Christ? And so the scripture says, uh, even though I speak in tongues, I may sing in tongues, I may uh, 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 record in tongues, but if I'm not walking in love, if I'm not humble, then I'm just a noisemaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of noisemakers out there, and God does not want you to be a noisemaker. He wants you to be in line with the scriptures and so even though i may have the gift of prophecy ladies and gentlemen they may call me a prophet they may call you a prophet you can hear from god and speak uh, uh to people not only in your own language but in tongues and other languages you may be known as a great prophet you may get a word from the lord you may foresee the future you may see be a seer you may be able to predict when the next storm is coming when the next earthquake is coming you may uh be able to predict when the next assassination is going to take place but if you're not operating in love ladies and gentlemen you're just a noise maker you're not in order with the holy spirit so ladies and gentlemen as we go through this series on the gifts of the holy spirit let us line up with the word of god see what the word of god has to say none of you needs to be intimidated by anyone else in the body of christ no matter how popular they are you're not to be intimidated so um with all these gifts the bible says tongues will cease prophecy will cease there'll be a time in which there be there'll be no more tongues there be no more prophecy the only thing that's going to abide is love so ladies and gentlemen walk in love don't let anything separate you from the love of god and walk in love with your neighbor with your family if they hurt your feelings if they condemn you if they denounce you still love them uh, be quick to forgive them forgive them forgive all and as you look back over your life learn how to forgive those people who have hurt you no matter what they have done to you learn how to forgive them tell them you forgive them and just let them go and walk in the love of god and watch how god will bless you ladies and gentlemen as you walk in love towards all people you may say well pastor carter you don't know how bad that hurt you don't know how deep they cut me oh look i've been hurt i've been cut deeply but but i've also learned to obey god and to forgive anybody whether they're living or dead i've got to forgive them for hurting people i've got to forgive adolf hitler for killing 12 million jews i've got to forgive joseph stalin for uh 
uh, killing 12 million Jews. I've got to uh, forgive Idi Amin, who killed so many in Uganda. I've got to forgive anyone who's ever hurt my family, my loved ones. I've got to forgive. Uh, I, I hear so many African Americans, they're still uh, angry at white people for enslaving black people. But I've got to forgive those who kept my people in slavery. I've got to forgive those who sold my people into slavery. I've got to forgive those black tribal chieftains who sold their own people, who captured their own people and sold them to white people for slavery. I've got to forgive. I've got to forgive. I'm not going to be one of those people on Facebook always passing off uh, 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 bitterness and hatred. Uh, make this go viral, they say. Make this go viral or you need to read this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to stop perpetuating the hatred. It's time to let slavery go. It's time to forgive. It's time for, to forgive your grandmama, your mama, your daddy, your great granddaddy. It's time to forgive uh, President George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe. Uh, it's time to forgive all those presidents. It's time to forgive all those leaders who have caused hurt and harm to the nation. It's time to forgive all those who have caused hurt and harm in your family. It's time to forgive. When Jesus hung on the cross, ladies and gentlemen, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we're to walk in forgiveness. And, and the scripture says that we're not to let any root of bitterness be in us. Don't let any root of bitterness be in you, whereby many be defiled. And when you repent of bitterness, when you confess, Lord, I've been bitter at so-and-so. I've been angry at so-and-so. I release them now. I love them. And, and help me, Holy Spirit, to love them and release them. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see a release come upon you, and you'll see joy, unspeakable joy like you've never experienced. You'll get set free. So don't let anybody keep you captive or in prison because of what they've done to you or your family or your race or to your your nation don't let any historical figure and or any present figure keep you in captivity and in bondage and 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 get you all wired up every time you think of their name no release them forgive them don't let anybody keep you in prison jesus said i'm come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly jesus died to set all of us free praise god praise god and so we're talking today about the gift of faith the holy ghost gift of faith it's a spiritual gift it is not to be confused with saving faith saving faith and the gift of faith are two different things everybody who is saved has received the gift of saving grace in other words God has given us enough faith to get saved. I thank God that he gave me. I heard the word of God and he gave me. The Holy Ghost gave me the, 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 the gift of faith to believe that the word of God will do something in my life. And by that faith he gave me, he gave me the faith to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That is the gift of saving faith. All Christians have been given saving faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. The word uh, for the in the New Testament for for faith for faith is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I it carries the notion of confidence, certainty, trust, and assurance in the object of faith. The gift of faith is rooted in in one saving faith in Christ and the trust that comes through a close relationship with the Savior. Those with this gift have a trust and confidence in God that allows them to live boldly for him and manifest that faith in many ways. We're talking about the gift of faith. All through the Bible you see powerhouses, great men and women of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 gives you a list of great men and women of faith they accomplish great things and you may say wow 
And I hear people say, well, that was the Old Testament, and that was those times. God doesn't do that now. Oh, yes, he does do that now. Yes, he does do that now. God still gives people the gift of faith to accomplish great things for him. And we're going to be looking at that as we go along in the next couple of weeks. In the Bible, the gift of faith is often accompanied by great works of faith. Acts 3, 1 and 10, we see this gift in action when Peter sees a lame man, Peter at the beautiful gate, and Peter and John are on their way to pray, and Peter sees that man who is lame from birth, and Peter activates the gift of faith. God gave him a gift of faith for that moment, ladies and gentlemen, and God will give you a gift of faith for the moment. Exercise it and use it. And Paul and Peter said to the man, look unto me. The man was begging for money. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto you. And, and Peter said, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that man never took a step in his life. He was over 40 years old. And Peter said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to rise up and walk. And Peter reached down and grabbed the man and picked him up. And the Bible says strength entered into that man's ankles and his bones. And the man started walking. Then he started leaping and shouting and running. He had never done that before in his life. Why? Because the man of God spoke the word of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter was just an ordinary man, just like you and me. He was uh, not gifted with anything that we don't have from God. He was just an ordinary man. He had made his mistakes. He carried a knife. He had cut a man's ear off. He cut, he cursed. He was an ordinary man like us, but something happened to Peter. He got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, and his life was never, never, ever the same. And Peter began doing things and saying things that he never imagined he would do. Why? Because he had the gift of the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, you can do the same. You, these We're talking about in the Bible, ordinary people, ladies and gentlemen, like you and me, that when they came up against obstacles, when they came up against challenges, they activated the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God gives, the scripture says, God gives to every one of us a measure of faith. He gives the same amount of faith to each one of us. It's what you do with it, ladies and gentlemen, that makes a difference. What It's what you do with it. So you can ask God, Lord, give me the gift of faith. He gives it to you when you get saved, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You're already, you already received the gift of saving faith. That's how you got saved. And now you can conquer any obstacle in your life, any challenge that comes against you by faith. We walk by faith, ladies and gentlemen. We do not walk by sight. We do not let circumstances cause us to cave in or give up or back up or turn around. We walk by faith. Faith is a companion. Faith lives in us. Faith is the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit brings that gift along with other gifts so that we can live successfully for the Lord, so that we can demonstrate that the Lord is in our lives, so that we can convince people to put their trust in the Lord. God will not give you the gift of faith so you can just sit back and write books and puff yourself up and make people think you're somebody special. No, God gives you the gift of faith so that you can move mountains. You can move mountains in people's lives. Jesus said, if you say to that man, if you have faith as large as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed and that mountain shall be removed. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm, ta I'm t uh, preaching to the choir. Many of you are walking in faith. Many of you are acting in faith. But keep on keeping on and give, give God the praise. The scripture says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God has put a treasure in us, in these earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. Every time God does a miracle, every time he does something mighty, give him the praise. Don't take 
the accolades of men. Don't take the applause of men. Don't uh, receive their trophies and their 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 uh, their money and their gifts. But whatever they give to you, you give it back to Jesus. You plant it into the kingdom of God. Give God the praise for every accomplishment. That is how we live. God uses ordinary people. When you look at the scripture, when you look for all the way from, from Abraham to John the Revelator, you see ordinary people, people like you and me, who put their trust in God and who God, whom God filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the time of trouble, they did not shrink from uh, their responsibilities. They did not run. They did not cave in, ladies and gentlemen. But they trusted God even in the most difficult circumstances. Daniel uh, was commanded, if you don't bow down before the statue of the king and worship him, you're going to be thrown into a pit of man-eating hungry lions. And Daniel refused to deny God. And they bound him and tied him up and threw him into a pit of lions. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the next day uh, when the king looked in, he said, Daniel, oh, Daniel, are you there? And Daniel said, long live the king. The lions were on one side of the cave, the den, and Daniel on the other. Daniel just went in, into the cave and, and went to sleep, ladies and gentlemen, because he knew that he knew that he knew that he knew that God was going to deliver him. He, he knew that if they threw him in the pit, uh, even, even if the lions would eat him, he would be at home with God. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. There were three Hebrews named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men were Daniel's companions. The authority said to him, to them, if you refuse to bow down and worship the king, and you refuse to, to uh, bow down when the trumpets sound, we're going to throw you into a fiery furnace. And, da and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, did not bow down. They walked in faith, ladies and gentlemen. They had the faith that if they're thrown into the fire, well, if they get burned up, they'll be at home with God. And if they get thrown in the fire, God still has the power to deliver them. And so they said to the king, you can tie us up, O king. You can throw us into the pit, into the fiery furnace. But we will not deny our God. Our God, they said, our God is able. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what situation you come against, Ryan Trogler lost his job. But Ryan Trogler, he had a moment. He had a moment. It hurt. It's very painful to be unemployed. But Ryan Trogler said, I'm going to trust in the Lord. He did not bring me this far just to leave me. I'm going to wait on the Lord. And God blessed him with a new job. You heard Ryan's testimony this morning. And, and there are many people. You've been up against all kinds of obstacles. Doctors shook their heads on some of you. Some of you, the doctor gave up on you. Some of you, uh, they gave up on you in elementary school. Some, they said you were unteachable. Some of uh, your relatives, your parents may have given up to you. Oh, you're not going to ever be anything. You were labeled even as a child to be a failure. But look at you now. Look at you now. Look at you now. It's all because of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus, he uses ordinary people, ordinary people. The, the songwriter says, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Little, I'm little, I become much when I place myself in the master's, <coughs> master's hand. Oh God, use us to the praise of your glory. God, give us the gift of faith. Give us the gift of faith so that we can do whatever you have placed us on this planet to do. The faith which we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, it's a special faith. It's something other than general faith or saving faith. It is the supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit, whereby a believer is empowered with special faith or wonder-working faith. And is it's beyond simple saving faith. My friend Paul Begley, Pastor Paul Begley, 
and I'm the dean of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. Pastor Paul told me when I met him in Jamaica several years ago, he said, he said, Pastor Carter, he said, man, I should have been killed in a car accident when I was a teenager. He said, man, I, I was riding in my car with another guy and, and uh, we ran off this road and crashed into a lake and, and the car sank into the lake. And Paul said, uh, I was able to get the window down and somehow I swam up and swam to the top of the lake. But he said, I remembered that my, my buddy was still in the car. He was unconscious. He, he was drowning in the car. And Paul said, he said, he said, Pastor Carter, I swam back to the car, opened the door, and I pulled my buddy out of the car and, and pulled him up on shore and revived him, gave him artificial res respiration. And then uh, I, I, I saw a farmhouse down the road, and he said, I dragged my friend, I carried him all the way to this house, and I knocked on the door. A farmer opened the door, and I said, uh, please call on uh, 911, my buddy needs some help. And the farmer said, I'm going to do that. He said, but don't you think you need some help also? And Paul said, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. The farmer said, well, I don't know. You need to look in the mirror. You're not all right. Paul said, ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Paul said, his head was hanging on the side of his shoulder. He had broken his neck and didn't know that he had a broken neck. He had climbed out of the car, swam to the top of the lake, and then uh, went back into the lake, opened the other door, let his buddy out with a broken neck, ladies and gentlemen. He is carrying his buddy to a farmhouse and re doesn't realize that his own neck was broken. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the gift of faith, how God can do great things through us even when things don't even look right, even when it looks like it's totally un, un, unnatural to do this sort of thing. We're talking about the supernatural ability of God. And Pastor Paul said he had a broken neck and didn't even realize he had a broken neck and still rescued and saved his friend. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I can tell you stories of people who picked up cars, little people who picked up cars from the front end so that someone could drag someone up from out from under that car, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about people having supernatural ability to push a car, hold a car from moving while someone is, is moved. People pushing a car by themselves so that someone can be lifted up from under an automobile. We're talking about ordinary people, Lord, uh, whom the Lord God is blessed to do supernatural things. We're talking about God has given to every one of us a measure of faith. Praise God. Don't ever underestimate what God can do, ladies and gentlemen. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. The gift of faith is the greatest of the three power gifts. We're going to be talking soon about the gift of healing, the gift of miracles. But in the next three weeks, we're going to focus on the gift of faith. The gift of faith is a gift of the spirit to the believer in order that he might or she might receive miracles. Ladies and gentlemen, you need a miracle, the gift of faith. You need a miracle, the gift of faith. I was just telling my wife Jackie yesterday as we were walking the mountain trail. Back in December, January, and February, my body was so stiff, my equilibrium was off. Uh, I was afraid of falling and tripping because my body had kind of la like locked up. I could barely walk. And I said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I'm not going to give in to any crippling disease, whether it's arthritis or sciatica or, or anything else. And I began walking uh, in March. I said, Lord, I'm going to start walking again. God told me, you, you're healed. I healed you. You start walking again. Walk by faith. And not by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack and I did three and a half miles yesterday. Three and a half miles. Twice this week, we did three and a half miles. One day, a few weeks ago, we walked four miles. We're averaging about two and a half miles a day walking, ladies and gentlemen. I refuse to accept any crippling spirit come against my body. I'm going to walk in God's miracle power. He said, by my stripes, you're healed. He said, now walk in that word of healing. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what your situation is. 
I don't know what's come against you. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you fathers are facing. You mothers are facing. I don't know what you husbands and wives are facing. I don't know what you caregivers are facing. I don't know what those of you who have received an evil report from the doctor are facing. But I tell you this, our God is able. Our God is able. The, the king uh, uh, looked down into, looked into the fiery furnace and he said, did not we throw three people into the furnace? Oh, yes, king, we threw three in. Well, how is it that I see a fourth person in the fire? How is it I see a fourth person in the fire? And he looks like the son of God. Come on, somebody. They may throw you in the fire. They may uh, uh, send you home from your job. They may, the doctor may tell you, you've got cancer. Uh, you've got AIDS. You've got Ebola. You've got this or that. But God has the final answer. Our God is able to deliver. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, our God is able to to deliver and even if he does not deliver we will not bow down to you you got to tell the devil I will not bow down to you you've got to tell that sickness come on somebody I will not bow down to you you've got to tell that employer I will not bow down to you you may lose your job but you're not gonna bow down to unemployment you may, may as well tell your wife and tell your kids we don't have any food to eat but set the table. Come on, somebody. You may not have any food in the house, but tell your wife, set the table, honey. We're going to eat tonight. I know what I'm talking about because we've been there. Wes, we were there in North Philly. We were there. Uh, the Lord says, set the table. We didn't have any food. And there was a knock on the door. Come on, somebody. And there was a family brought us three or four bags of groceries and a monetary gift. I'm telling you, when you're down to your last meal and you don't know what else is going to happen, you tell your wife, set the table, baby. Set the table. We're going to eat tonight. She might look at you like you're kind of cockeyed, but God gives us the gift of faith. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. You may tell the doctor, doctor, I heard your diagnosis about this cancer, but I refuse to accept it. And in the name of Jesus, I will be healed. You take a stand, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how high those walls of Jericho may be. Joshua told the people, sanctify yourselves. Then we're going to walk around the walls of Jericho for seven days. We're going to walk around. We're going to sing praises unto the Lord. We're going to pray and praise God. And on the seventh day, those walls are going to fall. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be facing a giant. You might be facing a wall. You might be facing a Jericho. But in the name of Jesus, God will give you the gift of faith. And you tell your family, get ready. Get ready. Pack all of your stuff. We're going to move. We're, we've got a new house. We've got a new house. I've got a new job. You tell your family, get ready. Uh, Mabel, set the table because we're going to eat today. Ladies and gentlemen, on that seventh day when Joshua marched the people around, we know they were weary. They were tired. <clears throat> But on the seventh day, when Joshua commanded the uh, trumpeteer, blow the trumpet. When he blew the trumpet, the walls of Jericho fell down. You trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. No matter what your situation is, you call on the name of Jesus. Don't call on the government. Don't call on the welfare agency. Don't call on the food stamps, people. Don't call on your mama, your daddy. Don't call on anybody. Call on the name of Jesus. The scripture says, uh, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. I could tell you about miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle I've seen in my life as God has shown us how this gift of faith operates. Hallelujah. How the gift of faith operates. I'll never forget how a lady in our church came up to me, came to me uh, in the midst of Bible study one Wednesday night. It was the first year of our church way back in 1980. She said, Pastor, my niece uh, lives upstate Pennsylvania. She's got cancer. And, and uh, the Bible says they took handkerchiefs from Paul's body 
and 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 laid them on the sick and the sick were healed she says so pastor I, I brought a handkerchief and I brought some olive oil and I have an envelope with her address on it and pastor I want you to anoint this handkerchief with olive oil and pray the prayer of faith and send it I'm gonna send it to my niece I'd never seen that before in my life, ladies and gentlemen. And as I told some of you before, the congregation looked at me cockeyed. But I believe the word of God. I read Acts chapter 19, verse 11, where they took handkerchiefs from Paul's body and laid them on the sick, and the sick recovered. And I took that handkerchief, and I added my faith to that lady's faith, and, and blessed that handkerchief as a, 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 a point of contact we sent it to Mary Jane up in the Pocono Mountains and later that week later that week uh, the sister came to church on Sunday for our next service and she said pastor it's amazing Mary Jane received the handkerchief she applied it to her body in the name of Jesus and then she went to the doctor the doctors examined her and said the cancer is gone come on somebody give God the praise give God the praise God knocked my socks off that day I give him the praise the gift of faith works God uses ordinary people here use Linda Barrett here use you Jackie Fisher here use you Ryan Trogler here use you Wes Carter here use you Tyrone Kirkpatrick here use you Bishop Elijah in in uh in Nairobi here use you David Carter in Dubai here use you Chantel in in Guyana here use you a uh, uh, memo in Belgium here use you John and Emily in Paris France here use you crystal in California here use you Christy Carpenter in uh, Idaho here use you uh, wherever you are it is no secret what God can do what he's done for others here do for you in the time of trouble the Lord will hide you no matter what you're facing you call upon the Lord and ask him God to give you the gift of faith God to give you the gift of faith not only that he'll give you the victory we're gonna talk in the next couple weeks about how he used Rahab the harlot how he used Abraham how he used Isaac and Jacob how he used Paul, how he used David, how he used so many, how he used Elijah, how he used Jephthah, how he used uh, uh, Esther, how he used so many. Ordinary people, ladies and gentlemen, like you and me. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I want to encourage you, if you're listening today and you're not saved, give your life to Jesus and receive the gift of salvation. The scripture says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. God will give you faith. And then he will give you a special gift called the gift of faith. To handle any situation that comes in your life or the life of your loved ones or the life of the nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you about people who have prayed and, 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 and called storm clouds to go away. I have a personal experience with that. I can tell you uh, a story, uh, uh, Ken Copeland's story about how he saw a tornado rising in the sky. And he, he cursed that tornado and to told it to dissipate, and it disappeared. Ladies and gentlemen, God uses ordinary people. This is Pastor Leroy Carter at the Back to Basics online church. I pray that you'll share this message with someone else. These messages are recorded and appear on my YouTube channel at Leroy Carter. That's my YouTube channel at Leroy Carter. If you have any questions, call me. I'll be glad to sit down with you or, or chat with you or email you or text me uh, so we can talk. We need to talk about Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this church family. Thank you, Lord. Many uh, people I may never get to see in this life but I'll see them in heaven. But I thank you for what you're doing in their lives here on earth. Help them, God, to multiply the blessings by telling others about your love for them. 
oh God, reach, help us to reach out to those who are uh, out of church, those who are backed off, those who cannot attend church. Help us to reach out through the internet and through the emails and through the, the videos. Help us to reach people for your name's sake, Lord God, that all may know Jesus and the gift of salvation and eternal life. Continue to bless the people, strengthen them, meet every need. And I thank you, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen.